then done. Um, okay. We're going to get ahead and I will keep paying attention. Um, I am going to, um, how do I pin this video? Yay. Okay. There we are. Hi everyone. Thanks for being here. We're going to get started. Um, I'd like to introduce you to um, Taylor Campbell. Yes, we have the same last name because we are in the same family. We both married Campbell boys. Um, and as luck should have it, we are also in fundraising. Um, it's a family tradition. Um, I wanted Taylor to come on and chat with us today because Taylor, number one, um, she doesn't work for like Save the Children. She works for, um, she'll tell you about it, but she works for a, pro um, a private school um, here in Orange County. And, you know, they have modest fundraising goals. And so I wanted to um, show you what it's like for a very normal sized organization. Um, to take their fundraising event online. In addition to that, they had to bust this thing out from in-person to online in what, like a matter of days? She's gonna Literally, talk- Literally, yeah, 48 hours. <laughs> 48 hours. So you don't have to cancel. There is still um, opportunities. I'm just trying to get all this organized. Um, you don't have to cancel your event. You can definitely adapt, pivot, it's all possible, right? Um, and thirdly, they did better than they expected, which Taylor's going to talk about in some areas. And so if you do have the luxury of some time to plan things out, um, I'm sure you guys have the same opportunity to exceed your goals just like them, okay? So with that, um, what we're gonna do is I have a, I've prepared a list of questions. We're gonna go through them with Taylor. And then at the end, if you have any specific questions for Taylor, I will unmute you and um, you can ask them to her yourself. Um, we're gonna try and keep this as brief as possible just because I know a lot of people have things going on. So glad you guys are all able to be here. Um, and so with that, Taylor, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you work, um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for hopping on. I'm really excited that we have something that uh, hopefully you could use and we can share with you. Um, like Jess said, we were, I work for a small nonprofit private school here in Orange County. It's called St. John's. We have about 425 families, which is really small compared to most private schools. Um, so all our donors are basically just any enrolled families, grandparents. We have a small pool of alumni who still participate in fundraising. Um, and then any local businesses, which usually, you know, are tied to our family community. Um, so our fundraising goal for our event, I think you'll ask this in one of the questions, was 280, just to kind of give you a sample of where we go with our fundraising. Usually our annual fund, we try to shoot for around 225, so nothing crazy. Um, and yeah, this, this whole <laughs> uh, uncertainty time definitely threw a wrench in our plans. Our event was set to be held on March 14th. And literally that week, it was like everything was changing every 24 hours. And we went back and forth, like this could possibly go online. What does that look like? But mainly focusing on keeping the event happening um, and being mindful that some people probably wouldn't attend, even though they bought tickets. Um, so yeah, it wasn't until about two days prior that we decided to switch it to an online model. Okay, great. So maybe what you could do is paint the picture of what your in-person event was supposed to be like, mm -hmm. so people can kind of wrap their head around, oh, this is what they were going to do, so they can then understand the contrast of what you all ended up doing. Mm -hmm. Now, we will note that because you had to switch this around in such a short amount of time, you had sold tickets, um, which maybe you can talk a little bit about people mm -hmm. wanting refunds on or not, um, as well as did you... Um, sell sponsorships in advance, yeah. which again, people or tables, which maybe people did or didn't ask for money back or just, mm -hmm. so maybe, yeah, start with how the event was supposed to go and then mm -hmm. we'll go from there. So our event, um, it's usually held at a really fancy, expensive venue and we really shifted our model this year per Jess's recommendation and we uh, tried to host it on campus. Um, so we were really looking forward to using this year as like, okay, this is our first one. There's going to be lots of notes, lots of kinks along the way, and then we'll adjust it and keep this model for the next three years. Um, so we were looking to get about 200 to 250 people attending, knowing that we'd probably be on the 200 side because it is such a big shift from venues that we are used to using. 
Um, we had food that was being 100% donated by a local restaurant here called Todos Santos. Um, all of our auction was no consignment. We didn't pay for anything. Every silent auction item was donated because we wanted to keep that uh, cost down so we can get 100% of the donations. Um, but yeah, we were really looking forward to using this as a notes for next year event. So it was kind of a bummer that we didn't get to do all that. Um, however, we did get to see how much work it is going to take once we do host the event on campus and everything that that would entail. Um, as far as tickets, we tried to lower our ticket costs. We are, one of our goals this year was to make our event accessible for all. We have a wide variety of families and we wanted to make sure that we can just kind of make this more of like a, everybody's all in, we're here to support the school, whether I'm raising my paddle or not, like I'm just gonna go and support. Um, so we did offer an early bird price this year, which by the way, went really, really well. We sold our bulk of our tickets in the early bird pricing. How, um, Taylor, how early did you start selling early bird tickets? So our event was March 14th. We opened those up January 26th, I wanna say it was. Okay, so like six-ish weeks. Mm -hmm. And we kept them open for three weeks. Okay, cool. And then what can you tell us what the price point of early bird versus um, regular pricing was? Yeah, so just to give you some history, our tickets are normally about $195 a person for our gala, um, which I've heard is actually relatively low, I think, compared to some, maybe right in between. Um, and then this year we dropped our price to 175 and the early bird was 135 Okay, cool. So a lot of people got it to 135 Great. Um, so yeah, making this shift when we first sent out our email saying like, Hey, you know, we originally was like rain or shine, it's happening. And then literally the next day it was an email that was like, okay, rain it is like, it's all going online. Um, we basically, first of all, thanked everyone in that email who participated and bought tickets with the intent to attend the online event, but that we were willing to refund their tickets if they wished to do so. Um, and you asked about underwriting and sponsorships. We definitely had a lot of underwriting and a lot of sponsorships. And we even had our programs printed to go on tables, which included all our sponsors' logos. And they weren't getting their full recognition now. Yeah. Um, luckily for us, we have students who were still coming to school that week. So we sent all the programs home. So they did get some advertising out of that. Okay. Um, but we reached out to all of our sponsors and asked if they wanted refunds. And there wasn't a single one who okay. wanted a refund. Um, as far as tickets, we refunded any tickets that were purchased by a faculty staff member without even asking. We just refunded those right away. Okay. Um, but mainly it was that broad email that we sent out that said like, hey, if you want to have your ticket refunded, we're happy to do so. If not, thank you for your donation. And only two people reached out of our 200 people who were attending. And so out of all of the people that bought tickets, only two people mm -hmm. even replied and they wanted their money back. Yes. And how about sponsors? Sponsors, none of them. They all wanted to donate. Okay, cool. So everyone, I'm just like triple underlining that in this situation, which I think is kind of the theme, um, is that people were very um, generous. Mm -hmm. Very great. Right. Supportive. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay, cool. Even though they weren't getting their same type of benefits. Um, can you paint the picture of like, again, so your in-person event was supposed to be what? Like sit down dinner, auction, band, like walk us through what this gala was supposed to be like. So again, people can understand really what it switched to. Right. So it was going to be a sit down dinner. Um, we really mm -hmm. wanted to do a stand up cocktail table event that since again, we were making the shift on the campus, we wanted to keep it kind of close to the level that they were used to receiving. Mm -hmm. um, so we were tenting, sorry, my email, I don't know how to turn that off without muting myself. Um, our, we were tenting our gym, basically, like you wouldn't even notice you were on campus. Um, mm -hmm. We had about 20 tables, all seated dinner. It was going to be a buffet style for the sake of space. Okay. Um, initially, it was supposed to be plated, but we just didn't have the capacity for that. So we, did, uh, we were going to have two buffet tables on either side. Um, do you want me to get into like the kind of asks, asks that we go through during the night as well? Uh, sure, because you guys, yeah, sure. Okay, so after, so our cocktail hour actually <laughs> contains a lot of asks. They have their silent auction items that they can bid on. We do our opportunity drawing, and we have something called wine wall, which is something we do unique at our school. We basically have a family who hosts like a Christmas party back in November, and your ticket into the party is a bottle of wine. And then at the event, we have a wall that you spin and land on a number and you win a bottle of wine, but you have to pay $30 in order to spin. It's basically all the wines donated and then we fundraise using that. Got it. Okay. 
Cool. And then, yeah, once they get down to the sit down portion, we have something called a hundred yard dash. I don't know if any of you have done that before with the boards and they have to, you know, stick their sticker on a donation amount to donate to like, a, it's basically like a fund to need. Um, for instance, this year it was going to our athletics program. And then we jump into our live auction, which is a paddle raise. And then we end with our other fund to need, which is also a paddle raise. And we call it our parent gift. Okay, cool. So lots of streams of revenue in addition to the tickets and the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And can you remind us again what your guys' um, usual goal is? So we want to, we usually shoot for about 250 in revenue, but we like to net around 180. Okay, cool. And then, okay, so with basically 48 hours, you decide we're not doing this, mm -hmm. um, but we are going to do as much as we can online. Right. So talk to us about what revenue streams you kept in place since some of them, you know, require you to be in person and that was no longer going to be happening. So talk to us about what you guys did do and maybe if you can explain how you guys shifted your financial goals, revenue goals, um, all of that would be helpful. So yeah, especially with the last minute switch and you know, the reason for the switch, we wanted to be as sensitive as possible. Um, for a brief moment, we, you know, looked at, okay, do we postpone this? I mean, we already opened up our silent auction. Is there any going back now? Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I was just talking to our director of development today, and she agreed. We're like, thank God we did it, and we just went for it because everyone was expecting it anyway. And yeah, there's a lot going on, but I don't think we would have hit our goal had we moved it. Mm -hmm. um, because people were already planning, you know, in their wallets, like, okay, the gala happens around this time. I plan to spend this much. Right. Um, so in order to be sensitive around these families, we took out our opportunity drawing. We weren't going to sell the $20 tickets for that. Um, we took out wine wall and we actually pulled all the wine. We had 150 bottles of wine and we oh. made three different wine vaults, which each had 50 bottles in it. Wow. And those actually made more than our wine wall would have made anyway. Wow. So you just, just so I can paint the picture, you just basically like coupled those into auction items and then sold the individual auction items. Yeah. And they all went for about two grand each. So wow. it, yeah, it did really well. Okay, cool. And it's then all of our, auction. yeah, I know, right. Um, all of our live auction items, we basically switched to silent items so that there was a buy now option. Okay. Um, because our revenue goal at this point was just like, let's just take what we can get and call it. Like, let's yeah. Yeah. be really sensitive and whatever we make, great. We know we probably won't hit, but that's fine too. Um, as long as everyone's still supportive, we're good with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's maybe get, so okay, so just so I understand the, you went from um, revenue streams of tickets, sponsorships, all of these in-person things like the wine wall and the, yard dash and the auction and the mm -hmm. live paddle like there's a lot going on right and it's now been condensed into four things so you still had the ticket sales mm -hmm. you still had the sponsorships and then it was kind of um I'm gonna like air quote live ask mm -hmm. because we're gonna talk about what that like really looked like because mm -hmm. I know already and then um and then the auction piece right mm -hmm. okay yeah so and we no parent gift though we did not do any of our fund and need either Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So then, um, so it sounds like at least after the sponsorships and the tickets, the main bulk of revenue came through your online auction, mm -hmm. which what everything turned into online auction. Can you talk to us through the logistics? Like, did you use a company? Did you use pen and paper? Mm -hmm. Um, how did that go? How far did you release that to people in advance? Did you keep it open after the event closed? Like, Give us some of those juicy details. Yeah, so we opened our silent auction on that Monday and the event was to be held on Saturday. Okay. So we made the switch. We were just really clear in our communication. Like, okay, so our, our gala is called Cardinella. We're the Cardinals and it's a gala, so we call it Cardinella. Um, we did an email about like, what is online Cardinella? What does that look like? And we kind of broke down every single like silent, live, where's wine wall? Just so they kind of knew which ways they could give. Okay. Um, and we did leave our parent gift open on that. We just didn't push at all just so we could still receive fund and need donations. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think for, what was the other half of your question on that one? So tell us the logistics, like what, what bidding company did you use? That's um, right. What was it like to upload? What was, 
what was the success of that? Did you have any technical glitches? So we used GiveSmart. This was our first year using GiveSmart. We're used to using 501 and they were acquired by GiveSmart and we were pretty happy with them actually. And they made this super easy to make the switch. Okay. Um, the one hard part though was going to be the parent gift and just for the logistic side of it, we decided not to keep that on there. And as far as, you know, being sensitive to our families, um, we didn't really have many glitches with GiveSmart. I thought they were great. Their reporting is pretty easy, pretty clean. Um, but I'm so curious. For people, um, unfortunately in this like Zoom thing, we can't, a lot of people aren't on video, but um, I'm curious for people who don't know what GiveSmart is, or maybe give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you do or don't know what GiveSmart is, um, Taylor can explain. Okay, so we have at least, oh, we got a lot of thumbs down. So talk to us about what it is. Um, I also really like GiveSmart. So can you talk to us? Because I think one of the things they're good at is the onboarding process and for an inline um, in-person event, if those ever come back, um, they have very, very great, um, on-site staff. So maybe just explain to people like what GiveSmart is, how hard was it to get set up? I'm not sure if you're willing to disclose how much it costs, um, any of those. Yeah. So GiveSmart's basically just like an online fundraising platform. So they can, they can do displays during your event. You sell tickets through it. It's basically like your whole event website. So whenever people, we would send an email out about Cardinella, it would direct them to this website. They could buy tickets, they could buy their sponsorship, they can you know, get a sneak peek at items, they can bid on items, you can even donate items through there. So we see the data that comes in for what families are planning to donate and you can generate all your tax receipts and letters from it too. Great, okay, cool. Um, some people in the comments are asking, um, is there, are there fees with GiveSmart? Um, so do you, I mean, I know yeah. they're from some organizations. Do you want to talk through a little bit about that? Yeah. So they do, they work with a credit card processing company called CardPoint and the fees I want to say are about three and a half percent. So they're pretty high. Um, you have the option to pass those fees on to your donors, which was something we explored for a little bit and decided that this wasn't the year to do it. Um, and you also have the option to make that optional. So if someone's checking out on all their items for the night, you could say, hey, would you like to make your donation, you know, completely 100% donated and pay for your own credit card fees? And some people opt to do that and some don't. Um, but total cost for this event, even with, I think we had like four on-site staff attending, it was around 3,450. As a set mm -hmm. And was that over two years? Um, I... <laughs> I think it was over a year, but it was like unlimited events. So we could do our golf tournament through there as well. Okay. So it kind of made it worth it because, mm -hmm. um, well, number one, pain and pen and paper is like uh, the biggest pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious as to what percentage of money was recuperated, meaning like, did anyone kind of not follow through on their donations made through GiveSmart? Um, how did that go? So, I mean, everyone actually did follow through. We right. offer, we auction off um, parking spaces for front row parking at our school that go for 10,000 each. And we solicit those well in advance of the event. Um, and this year we actually got two new ones, but a lot of people like to pay by check. So when they pay by check, it doesn't go through GiveSmart. I just manually input them through there. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, that's amazing. Um, if anyone does have any specific questions around the technology, um, you can hit, the chat button over and we can make sure to ask Taylor or you can ask those questions in the Q&A. But that pricing um, is similar to the experience I've had with GiveSmart, um, like around that kind of $3,000 um, initial setup fee. Um, in the past, I have actually passed the fees on to donors and still had a really high um, conversion rate. So I, in this situation, especially given the time, wouldn't be afraid to do that if you guys end up going with a platform like GiveSmart or I'm also familiar with Mobile Cause, who's really good, um, because then you'll retain more of that 100% donation um, if they cover the fees and, and things like that. Okay, cool. Um, okay, some other questions coming up that I'm yes, just going to see that. Um, so someone here is asking about donors from outside the U.S. Maybe they didn't get the tax benefit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, and sorry if you hear my dog in the background. Um, Taylor works for an organization that's very localized. So I'm guessing, no, you didn't have any international, but maybe. 
We do have a lot of international families at our school um, from China, so they were not going to attend the event. Um, one of our international families, though, kind of got together with all the families saying like, hey, if you're not going to attend, um, we'd like you to donate $200 to the event. So in total from our international families, they just gave like a straight underwriting donation of close to $4,000. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they didn't participate in the auction or anything like that. Okay. And I don't know, I'm sure it's different for every country on the tax benefit. Mm -hmm. um, so you still issue them a tax receipt yes. and what they do with it with their accountant in their country is exactly like it's a u.s tax receipt we just email it to them even if their address is in china and then that's up to them to figure out cool so okay so let's get into um how so you guys said you opened up bidding on the monday before your event because mm -hmm. that was happening and then midweek you guys decided we're actually doing this whole thing online mm -hmm. did you guys do anything to like drum up energy or like do any kind of encouragement live were you texting people on the day of or doing social media on the day of or was there a video from your principal like walk us through any kind of i'm gonna again use air quotes around live but like anything to make it feel live did you do any elements like that so that's a great question. And one of the things that's hard about being a nonprofit and being a school is there's a lot more important things to our families sometimes as opposed to fundraising. Um, so we had like multiple emails coming out from our head of school principals. What's the next week of school going to look like when students are starting to learn online? Mm -hmm. um, so we really had to be forced into toning down our communication around the event. Mm -hmm. um, so at our school, much like public schools, we have a PTF, which is like a PTA or parent teacher fellowship. So they were kind of our cheerleader, cheerleaders in this one and people were still getting together and having parties and having dinners and going online and bidding. So she was just kind of texting those groups of people just to kind of, you know, see where they're going and what they're donating to. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, our, since our auction was to close now on Sunday night, we decided to leave it open the entire weekend. Um, it was more of like that last hour on Sunday night that we did like countdowns via social media and teasing more items and like, look, this one has no bids yet. And did yeah. what we did there. So in terms of anyone that may have been like a performer or like a speaker or anything, you guys just cut all of that. We cut all of it. We were supposed to have a live performance from um, a finalist on The Voice. His name was Preston Pohl. We had booked his flights. We had booked their hotel. Um, yeah. And we just had to, we cut all of it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I get it. You guys also turn this around like in 48 hours. <laughs> so I don't know, let's imagine you had maybe even a couple more days to plan. Would you have in hindsight maybe asked, um, what was his name? What Preston Pohl. Preston to maybe like do something live from his couch or like, I don't know, anything or like a message from your principal or is there anything in hindsight? I know we're not to lessons learned just yet, right. but is there anything you think might have been compelling or do you think it was better just to keep it simple? I think for us and being a school and having to remain sensitive about how much was changing for our students, we had to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. um, I think we definitely could have upped our social media game for sure. Um, that's one of the main ways our parents are keeping track of, you know, events and what's going on. So I think more Instagram stories would have been beneficial. I think maybe even a couple more emails around like what the event looks like. Our parents are really bad email readers. <laughs> they just, they get so many emails from the school that's like, oh my God, like another email about the gala, yeah. like we know. Um, so yeah, kind of getting more creative around ways we could have communicated the change in the event would have been nice to have those couple days. Okay, cool. Um, I think that you are not alone, that like everyone's being inundated with emails right now. Mm -hmm. um, but people are like, I know personally, I'm like on like Instagram and Facebook and social media, mm -hmm. like way more than I even normally am, which is right. a little frightening. So I think that that's an important note, like yes, send emails, but people are getting inundated with emails. So social seems to be a place people are like hanging out on more yes. so for people that maybe haven't done their event yet. Keep that in mind, like sending 10 emails on the last day might not be as effective as just being super present on social media. Well, and I've noticed that the internet is just more and more a beautiful place now that we're all locked at home and it is fun. Like memes are really funny to read right now and people like just kind of want to go on to like get that break and like have a laugh about it. So it's definitely a good place to catch their attention. Yeah. It also is a little bit more interactive. Like people can share, people can repost um, on social media versus email, which mm -hmm. is kind of 
I mean, it can be two way or you can forward it, but it's maybe a little bit more effective. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, you guys wanna peek at my bill. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, someone here is asking, how did you do your countdown? Um, can you describe what that looked like? I think you said on social media. Yes, so we did not do a live stream for our countdown. It was just on Instagram stories and there's like a little tab you can hit at the top. I think it's like a little smiley square and you can hit countdown and all you have to do is input the end time for your event. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep, go ahead. Oh, and we would just um, like do like a boomerang of like our silent auction page that was on Give Smart that has images of all the items just so it's like, look how many there are. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. And this is all making me think like I might come up with some sort of like, I don't know, idea pool for what you can do on social media for anyone that might be interested um, mm -hmm. to activate your social media, especially on the days leading up or the day of your event to get creative. Um, because I'm just thinking like, you guys could have been doing polling, you guys could have been, um, you know, like have the sticker box with the questions, you mm -hmm. could have um, even like some sort of template that people like screen grab and then reshare that's branded to Cardinella. Mm -hmm. Like, again, you guys didn't have time to pull any of this strategy and thoughts together but for those of you that may have some time um there's I think a lot of options um and so for the people asking about specifically the live stream component again Taylor and her organization decided to not really do that because they did this in a 48 hour time frame and again felt like keeping it simple keeping it direct was the way to go um Again, you don't have to do that. And on Monday, I dropped a video with um, my friend Julie, who works at Revent Consulting, who is an expert in all things streaming and production. And if you haven't checked out that video, um, which is on my YouTube page, and I can post the link below, she gives some really great insights on how you guys can do that, companies to use, equipment to use, how to keep it cost effective. Um, or you can just reach out to Julie. She's doing um, free consultations, um, which could be super helpful too. Um, okay, so I wanna get into some numbers if you're okay with sharing. Yes. So you mentioned before, tell us again what your guys' original revenue goal was. So that was that 250,000. And then after backing out expenses, we try to hit around 180. Um, and I don't know what this looks like for other nonprofits, but for us, our fund and need is not part of our revenue. We have to back that out of our revenue for the night because it's a separate, like, restricted gift. Sorry, before we get into this, I want to address this thing, this fund and need, because you guys had a link on your page or your website or something that was just a general donation link, right? That right. raised, how much money did you tell me? Like, 20 uh, so yeah, for our fund and need, we raised about 20 grand and it wasn't the general, we had our general donate now section, but we also had a donate section. Like we gave our fund and need an item number that you could donate to. Okay. And you guys decided not to push that just given everything that was going on and you guys still raised $23,000. Yes, we did. Yeah. And our fund and need mainly it was because we're supposed to be renovating our multi-purpose room. We don't know what summer is going to look like. We don't know if we'll be able to move forward with that project now that we have, you know, another big project underway with all our students learning online. So yeah, yeah. Just, do we need the funds? Okay, got it. So then tell us about your auction. What was your original auction goal and how did you guys land against that? So auction, I want to say we tried to make around, I think it was like 130 um it did not do that well but the overall just having everyone keep their tickets and cutting half of our expenses vendors were so gracious about uh not making us make our payments in full saving deposits for next year so we're already ahead of budget for next year or refunding completely mm -hmm. mainly i think what helped us was cutting back all those expenses front to moving to an online auction and jesse you've mentioned what is it the non-gala gala, gala. Uh, like i i think it could be amazing because you don't have all those expenses yeah. um but yeah, so our auction was about 11 live items, and we have a parent at our school who has a lot of connections, um, and unfortunately, a lot of those non-consignment live auction items were travel, which is not a hot item right now. Yeah. Uh, we, we had trips to the Amazon, trips to Antarctica, trips to Italy, which got no bids. We were... <laughs> 
it was like, all right, we're just going to throw these out here. We're going to price them really low if they want to buy them now. And um, a lot of them are really great with their expiration dates. Like we reached out right away, like, hey, are there expiration dates? Can they move the dates to like 2022 or whatever it may be? Yeah. Um, so a lot of our trips did not go. Um, a lot of our sports experiences did really well. And then again, those parking spaces basically carried us. Okay, cool. So can you give us a breakdown or like a total revenue raised? From just live? Um, or just let's from, talk in totals. So total, I think we're, we're still reconciling right now with our business office, but we're right at that 180 threshold. That's amazing. So because you guys were able to reduce expenses and still carry through with your tickets, your sponsorships, your mm -hmm. um, general donate slash live ask button, and auction you guys were still able to meet your revenue goal yes that's incredible well and something fun that we do that i don't know if any other organizations can do this mainly because we have students is we have like a mini cardinella for our kids and it's called kids cardinella and we fundraise and we make fun baskets that are themed to each grade and we get revenue from that that also plays into the night and that brought in about twenty three thousand for us prior to the event actually happening Cute. I love that, that you really get everyone involved in the philanthropy. That's so mm -hmm. awesome. Um, okay. Someone asked here, um, number one, Laura wants to know who donated the trips. Um, and then she wants to know how is the kid event a fundraiser? Okay. So the trips were donated from a family at our school. Um, I will say that they are Olympians, so they have a lot of connections and they use, um, they were somehow, they know someone at Ice Axe Expeditions. I don't know if anyone here has used them for any trips, um, but there's a guy, I think he's a CEO named Doug Stoop that they had a connection with. So he was just the one who was so willing to donate all of those. Mm -hmm. um, we also have trips, oh, here comes my little guy, trips from last year. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> trips. <laughs> Trips that weren't sold in years past or that just weren't used from years past that people willingly donated back. Um, we even had a big bear stay that was just donated from families. Again, like having families as our main donors, they all have lots of connections. So right. That's where our, mainly our trips came from. Um, but as far as the kid event of fundraisers, so what we do is in January, we send out emails to all our parents saying, hey, we're going to be doing class baskets for our kids, Cardinella. Would you like to donate to support your first grade class basket or your third grade class basket. This year right. we're doing a hover cart or a Lego land tickets or whatever. So we get a lot of donations for those. And then our PTF or our PTA makes these baskets using just a small portion of those donations. So the entire overage goes to Cardinella revenue. And then about a month later, after the baskets are made, we bring them on campus and we host an event and you, it's opportunity drawing tickets. So we sell tickets for $20 each. The kids get to you know, grab their tickets and pick which basket they want to put them in. And so basically it's all that ticket revenue that helps us fundraise. Got it. Cool. Okay, great. Super helpful. Um, I, I'm going to get to these questions in the comments in just a second. Um, but I did want to just ask like two last questions and then we can maybe open it up for questions um, that people might have. Um, I guess I want to know, um, number one, um, how you've followed up with donors post event, um, how you've recognized them, thank them, um, really kind of given your gratitude since again, no in person. And then number two, I also want to know like lessons learned, meaning like if you would have known now, or what's the thing, if you knew then what you know now, what are some tweaks you would have made, um, even knowing and giving yourself a lot of grace because you did this in such a short turnaround time? So as far as recognizing our donors, the first thing we did was everyone was like, great, I want these items. How do I get them now that the school's closed? So um, basically in a thank you email, we emailed every auction winner and said like, thank you so much for participating. So glad you won X item. You will be able to redeem items once school reopens. Um, so that was our first thank you. Um, our school is really big on, we kind of like think throughout the year. So whether it was annual fund or Cardinella, we do a lot of publications that we're sure to mention our thanks in there. So we'll have a magazine that goes out. Gosh, I'm so sorry. That's so loud. We'll have a magazine that goes out. Thank you, honey. In the fall that will recognize anyone who donated to Cardinella. And additionally, we advertise in Coto Magazine and we usually put all the donors and sponsorship names in there. Um, and just and, for everyone that doesn't know what Kodo is, it's just a local magazine. So you guys could do that with whatever maybe town or city you're in as well. 
And then we also um, we're in the process of writing handwritten thank yous to anyone who bought a ticket or purchased an auction item or even bid on an auction item. Cool. Great. Awesome. And then lessons learned or what lessons would you learn? Think? Um, again, the stronger communication and stronger uh, social media presence would have been huge, I think, for us. Um, I think we should have made our fund a need, our parent gift, um, not the 100 our dash, but just like our, our big fund and need that was supposed to be paddle raised. I think we should have made a bigger deal of that because a lot of people were looking for that page and did donate a lot more than we thought would have. So I think we would have maximized that. People probably would have given to that more than actually bidding on like a $100 auction item. Got it. Um, what else did we say we would have changed? I think we might have, we, we considered keeping our opportunity drawing just because it's fun. Um, our opportunity drawing, what you would have won was like an Irvine staycation, which again at the time was not a hot place to go. So <laughs> we just switched that into a super, a, a silent auction item and it still went, it still sold. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it would have been fun to do like an online opportunity drawing with like a live draw or like a live streaming, even if like it was just me and my director of development for like 20 minutes just being on there and being present. I think that would have been fun too. Cool. Great. Um, okay. Super helpful. I just want to like reiterate a hundred million times, like double underscore double everything that what I think is so amazing is like, number one, you guys just did it. Like you did not cancel. Um, I think that that is, there's a lot to be said about that and a big congratulations for pulling it off. Um, number two, I want to say it, from this experience, it looks like your community was still willing and wanting to rally support for you guys. Um, so if anyone out there is kind of afraid to fundraise right now, this is an example to show you that you shouldn't be because your community of support wants to lift you all up. Um, I also want to earmark that you guys were adaptable. Like you didn't, you, you shifted and changed things around. And maybe if you had slightly more time, you would have kept some of the live elements included. But, you know, even that example with the wine where you guys had these, first of all, I'm sure you didn't want 150 yeah, bottles right. of wine <laughs> forever. So you guys, you know, broke it up and switched it up and made it work. Mm -hmm. um, I think for anyone that can get creative, you guys, isn't my nephew just the, like the most you see, Do you see Jess? Hi, hey, buddy. Yeah. Uh, um, so I think like being willing to, willy, being willing to adapt, pivot, adjust, be nimble, be flexible, be creative, um, will serve you well. Um, okay, there's a few questions here that I can read out loud. Um, if anyone wants to ask a question to Taylor, you can either write it in the chat box, or if you go to the little button down at the bottom that says participants, um, I think there is a way for you to like raise your hand. And if you do that, then I can unmute and take your video off um, if you wanna ask the question live. Um, okay, so first up um, is, uh, the live ask, um, did give smart open from Monday to Saturday, um, or did something special happen? So maybe just, you already explained this, but maybe go through again, how you guys kind of tone down your live ask and then what you originally planned the auction to be open and then what you extended it to. So our silent auction, since it had opened that Monday, um, we switched all of our live auction items to just silent and we just created a category that was called exclusive live. So if people wanted to look at the big ticket items, they would just filter the, to the exclusive live items. So there was no like big reveal. It was just like, hey, let's just put these items out there now. We'll send the email, but people can get online and start looking at our live items now so they can plan for the weekend. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, and then to the question around the live ask, um, Taylor explained that just given this current situation, they had a way for people to, um, <laughs> I know we're all like trying to concentrate with things in the background. Climbing the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, um, sorry, that we, you guys, um, tone that part down. You just had the button and in hindsight, you would have pushed that harder. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And your auction just one more time was extended all the way through a Sunday, right? Yes. So Monday it did Sunday. close on the day of the event. Uh, no, it closed the day after the event was to be held. So event, originally our event was on a Saturday. We closed it Sunday. Okay. Got it. 
great. Um, okay, then Laura here wants to know what was the hundred yard dash and the opportunity and is the opportunity drawing the same thing as a wrap? Well, maybe for people that don't know what either of those things are, you can just explain them. Yes, so opportunity drawing is exactly that, it is a raffle. So um, that was just like a fun thing to get the giving going for the early part of the evening. And our family, our, we have such a give to get community, which is kind of unfortunate in our school, um, but they love to bid on anything that's like a for sure win or like a chance to win. Um, and then 100 yard dash, that was to fund our athletics program, whether it was like new uniforms for athletics or I don't know, whatever, new basketballs for the gym, anything that, that the athletics program would need. Um, but are you, do you want to know like what the 100 yard dash looks like? Yeah, I think people don't know what it is. I don't really know where it is. Okay, so it's my least favorite thing that we do quite honestly. Um, <laughs> but are there like these big, I want to say three by three foot by four foot boards and they're just grids all the way across with little squares. And one square will say $25, one will say 50, one will say 175, one will say 500. And when people sit down at their tables, they're given a little sheet of labels that has their bidder number on it. And when we do the 100 yard dash, you basically, I think it's like a one minute or two minutes, you have two minutes to go put your label on an amount. So people are like scrambling to find an amount to stick their sticker on. Got and it. then we just get those as donations to that fund a need, whatever's on those boards for their bidding numbers. Great. And just, this, oh, go ahead. Oh, it's just a fun way to kind of like get them out of their seats and get them excited to start giving to the live auction. Great. And so virtually, I'm not totally sure how that would have worked. It wouldn't have. And that's why we were like, let's just pull it. And yeah. yes, we want to support our athletics program, but there's bigger things right now. Yep. Um, just for someone that, um, first of all, I'm sure if you like Pinterest, Google how to do a hundred yard dash fundraiser, you will like get inundated. So don't, I'm sure there's resources. Um, number two, if you use a technology like Give Smart, um, all of those donations are processed. Like they collect your credit card upon site and then you just like are buying things through the app. So there's no like money exchanged, right? Right. And Give Smart was going to be there on site. They would pull the boards. They were going to be inputting all those do donations onto those accounts while we were running the live auction. I mean, we had so many staff coming to help that they were able to be spotters and then while Give Smart can handle that portion. Got it. Great. Okay, cool. Um, someone asked, has anyone used Neon to organize sponsors and donations? Do you think that switching everything to a program like GiveSmart would be better? I don't know anything about Neon. Um, I know that it's a CRM, I think, um, but I'm sorry, I, I don't know any capabilities. If anyone here is familiar with Neon, maybe hit it in the chat and you guys, I can connect you guys offline and you guys can chat about that. Um, give smart. I will say mobile cause is another one I've used at a big fundraiser. If you want to compare, um, they're both really great. In my experience, give smart has, um, a little bit better customer service in terms of the onboarding on-site features. Um, they may though be slightly more expensive. So it really depends what you're looking for. Um, you are able to negotiate with GiveSmart if you sign a two-year or multiple year contract. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, let's see. Um, okay, next question. Someone says here, I work at a K-8 independent school in New York City. Oh, my favorite city in the whole mm -hmm. world, except you guys are being hit by the virus. Oh, so stay safe. Um, parents are balancing a lot right now. There's so many emails. What messaging seemed to lead to the most engagement? Trying to tiptoe the line of reminding parents without bothering them. So great question. I'm curious what school you're at. Um, I met a couple of New York City independent schools at the NAIS conference um, in Atlanta. Um, so mainly, I mean, it's just being upfront. I think calling it like it is and the, just like from the top of your email, like, gosh, this is crazy. Or, you know, we hope you're doing well. We hope you're healthy and you're taking care of your family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for wanting to support the event. Here's what it looks like. So basically yeah. just not really beating around the bush and being direct, yeah. um, but also working closely with our head of school and with our other departments as to what emails were going out and at what times so that we could time it appropriately. Like, okay, we're not gonna send an auction email out right after the elementary principal just announces like what e-learning looks like. 
So yep. just kind of really coordinating with the whole school and the whole team on when communications were going out played um, a really big role. And I see the learning, learning spring school. Okay. I didn't meet anyone there. Bummer. I met the little red schoolhouse, little yellow schoolhouse, whatever it's called. Um, if I can give just some unsolicited advice with my consulting hat on, um, I would agree with Taylor that you need to be mindful of your communication schedule. Multiple emails in one day is probably not going to be super effective. I would say though, if you're going to send an email around fundraising, you need to be multi, you need to take a multi-pronged approach. So, um, you need to share the content of that email on your social channels, um, the same day um, because the fact is that I think it's like 13% or it depends what kind of section sector you're in um, will actually see your emails and I think it's only 6% on your social media so the fact is not everyone is going to see your message um, on only one platform. Um, the second thing I would say is you need to be so crystal clear so Taylor said be direct be direct what are you raising money for do not say we're raising donations that is not compelling so what you need to say is we are raising money for x or i would even get more specific we have a goal of raising one hundred and eighty thousand dollars to support the 483 students at our school so that they can x y and continue Z. learning or yeah and get specific there's stem scores soar 20 percent like get super specific um and break that out bullet that out a company um that text with a visual if you can canva is an amazing free tool that you guys can use for design um but you have to um like spell it out visualize it out mark it out super 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 clearly um Okay, we have now gone for over 45 minutes, which is amazing. Does anyone have any last minute questions for Taylor before we all sign off? Um, I'm actually here gonna put in the link um, a free resource if anyone um, wants it. I put together resource. How do I spell source? Um, in the chat box, um, I put together this um, PDF on how to take your in-person event online. Um, I'm working as fast as I can with a three-year-old at home to put some other free resources out for you guys. Um, after this conversation, it sounds like maybe putting some um, stuff around social media would be good on how to actually facilitate social media during your live event might be helpful. So that might be coming up. Um, if um, anyone has any questions, don't be a stranger. Um, I'll also put my email in here. Um, Taylor, can I put your email in here? Absolutely. Okay, cool. What's your email? <laughs> um, it is, do you want me to just type it in the chat? Would that be sure. easier? Sure, yeah, there okay, you go. Awesome. Um, so if anyone has any specific questions as it relates to Taylor's event, you guys can reach out to her directly. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm working on um, a call with someone that has done more of like a no gala gala, more of like a peer fundraising campaign that has become super, super successful. Um, so again, you don't have to do an event to be raising money right now. There's lots and lots of options. Um, but I feel like, at least for me, I like to hear from people that have done it so I can visualize it. I can see where they were and where they went. And I don't have a lot of those examples and I am like in the nonprofit world. So I'm feeling the need to bring those forth. So if you guys actually know of someone that's doing something really cool and would be willing to talk, I would love that information. Um, or if there's something that you guys would find helpful, um, please let me know. Like I don't have all the answers. Um, and with that, we're going to say a big thank you to Taylor. It looks like this is helpful. Um, and an abide to Carson, who's being so patient. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone have a lovely rest of your day. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs>